hi guys and welcome back to my channel so a while ago i asked you guys if you would be interested in doing a bikini prep or like show prep q a so i figured i would finally record i recorded it well figured i would finally get around to getting that video out i had recorded it and i just really didn't like how it came out just kind of old so i wanted to go ahead and redo it so this was the post Um, so this took place, um, I think it was in Tucson. It was my second, it was my second show of the season last year. So let's get right into some of the questions. Colby, uh, she said, can't wait to follow your prep. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited for my 2018 prep. It feels so weird to say that because it really doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I will officially be announcing when I'm starting my competition prep for 2019. Super, super excited. I am teamed up with my coach, Andrew Pardue, again, and I will share my 2019 goals with you guys uh, and like prep plans in a different video. So you guys will have to stay tuned for that one. Just short answer. Hi, I'm filming. Question, what would you say are some of the hardships you endure during prep that are most that are more emotional and not physical? For example, personal life with the family, husband in your case, while on prep. So this is from Mr. Gaines or Mora. So thank you so much for your question. I feel like this is a really good one, um, regardless if you're a bikini competitor or um, a male competitor, regardless of what your division that you're in. Competition prep, um, I feel like a lot of people have different philosophies. Some people are, you are 100% all in, um, balls to the wall, nothing's getting in your way, and then you have people who try to make it a little bit more of their lifestyle so it's not as disruptive. And I'm kind of, I believe a little bit of both. I think that in the beginning of prep, it can be a lot easier to accommodate social functions, going out to restaurants and not feeling um, like completely isolated. For me, I don't typically drink when I'm on prep, even when I'm like very, very far out, very beginning stages of prep, I just don't drink. That's just my personal opinion and my personal uh, kind of beliefs, I guess. Some people still kind of drink at the beginning stages of prep, I just don't. So I feel like sometimes um, in that sense, in regards and not being able to like eat everything that everyone else is, it can feel a little bit isolating, but I try to make sure that I am very much present in the moment. I still try to, um, especially when I'm with my friends, I feel like they very much understand my lifestyle and they're very accommodating of what I do. And so I never really feel like I'm missing out on a lot of things. I also make sure I try to revolve um, my, my training and like cardio and my meal prep around whichever event that we're doing. So uh, it helps if things are planned ahead of time. I feel like that really is helpful. And sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult when things are spur of the moment. So I think it's easier to have a, a personal life in the beginning stages. Once you get towards the very end, it can be very, very difficult because, I mean, typically your whole day kind of revolves around your eating schedule, and that can be really difficult, especially when you're low energy, you're really tired, you're sore, you're probably a little bit more irritable, and it can be really, really difficult. So one of the things that um, has been really helpful for me is I try to, I try to uh, be a little bit more accommodating of my husband, and I also well, we kind of talk about this and I'll tell him, you know, these, I really have to get through this next month, this next, these next two months. And then, you know, things will be a little bit easier I'm able to go out on dates again, you know, drink wine, DiGiorno. <laughs> um, but um, I have to kind of say like, hey, like I have to be selfish for a little bit, but you know, don't worry, we'll be able to do things that you want. I think that, you know, just like any relationship or any marriage, it's it's compromise, it's give and take, and sometimes you have to be a little bit more selfish, and sometimes you can be a little bit more giving. So I would say those last couple months, it is difficult, but I think it's really important to have open communication with your spouse and let them know kind of ahead of time that things might get a little bit rough and you will need their support more than ever towards the very end. So I guess that would be one of my tips would, would be really having that open communication. In regards to personal life, date night, uh, and just random nights out and friends with friends can be a little bit more difficult towards the end of prep, but I would say the social life is still manageable at the beginning stages. You know, or you can always do like more physical, like fun activities like going hiking, maybe just laying by the pool, taking it easy, things like that. So Andrea says, I got a question for you. What are your go-to pump up exercises before you get on stage? 
So this is really gonna vary depending on what division you're in and how your physique is looking on stage day. So for example, the bikini criteria, which pull up. So this was shared by FitPro Becky. Um, she is a NPC national level and um, IFBB judge and she shared the criteria. They came out with kind of like a new criteria back in, I think it was like around July and August where they really defined where they want the look for bikini to go. So for bikini, bikini athletes should display a foundation of muscle which gives shape to the female body, full round glutes with a slight separation between the hamstring and glute area, small, around, small amount of roundness in the delts, conditioned core, overall look, hair, makeup, suit, and tan, bikini athletes should not display muscular density seen in a figure physique, squared glutes, muscle separation seen in figure competitors, graininess or striations anywhere. And they gave, of course, the example of our Miss Olympia. So this is what they've deemed to be the what you should strive to look for for bikini. So with that being said, when you're pumping up, you want to make sure if you're super hard and you're super muscular that you're not over pumping up and you come out too full on stage. You're very lean and you don't have as much muscle as maybe some of the other girls and that might be a good idea to pump up. Really make sure that your muscles are popping and look full on stage. So for me personally, I feel like I'm kind of in between. I have been called a little bit more on the muscular side. However, I still do lateral raises with a band. So that is typically what I do as well as glute kickbacks and sometimes I'll do like air squats or things like that but that's what I do pre-stage. I do a pump up routine the beginning in the morning for like maybe like five hours before I go on stage before um, actually stepping on stage maybe like 30 minutes I will do lateral raises and glute kickbacks because I need my glutes to <laughs> The other question was show day and show weekend tips and what to expect. So I will link my show day videos up above for you to see just kind of like more of an example of like what it looks like. But show day, the best way I can describe it is a lot of rushing around and then a lot of waiting. So show day kind of tends to kind of drag on but then once it's your time it's just like go 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 and it's like very quick so the biggest tips i have for show day is to make sure you're just ahead of schedule i find that if you're running late if you're running behind you can tend to get really really stressed and that can like get you overworked and so i like to stay a little bit more calm on show day so just making sure you're early have your makeup and your hair done your tan done early to the venue ahead of time that you're just very relaxed and very calm i find that that really helps me um get to when I'm actually on stage and I need to be calm and confident that's really helped me kind of prepare my mind for the day. Show day typically it depends most NPC shows you will have either an athletes meeting or check-in the night before um, your show typically on a Friday. Saturday morning you'll have usually you'll have an athletes meeting before you go on stage and then typically bikini is last however I have seen some shows where they're different but just make sure that you look for the competitor schedule so you see where you're but typically bikinis last so you're going to do a lot of waiting around uh, if you're scheduled hair and makeup you might have to be up super early I do my own hair makeup and tan so I don't have any appointments that really just helps me feel a little bit more calm on show day everything's kind of on my schedule um, my time so I really like that instead of having to rush around to different appointments so you'll have your athletes meeting in the morning you'll wait around and then once it's time for you to go and start getting ready they'll call you backstage they'll line you up according to your height class and um, that's when you'll you'll start having your like pump up routine hopefully a little bit before you go on stage but your pump up your pre-workout like if you take anything like that and your pre-workout or like pre-stage fuel like pump food and <laughs> is what I call it I usually have like rice cakes and honey or rice cakes peanut butter and jelly something like that or pop tart I've seen some weird things backstage you're going for pre-judging uh, this will vary for show to show sometimes you'll do your individual routine sometimes they'll have you come out for comparisons it's just up to the judging panel of what they want to do and then you'll come out and then uh, you have your intermission which is typically anywhere from four five six hours and then you come back for a night show and then night show again it depends uh, on the competitors or the individuals and the judging if they want you to do your full routine if you come out and just kind of wave and then they present the trophies and then hopefully you get to go eat. Anyway, I highly recommend that you check out my previous show day video and you get like a better idea of how things will run. 
how to cut and prep but not lose your glutes. I drop fat easily and I feel like my general body type is lean. However, I always lose it in my glutes and boobs, RIP. <laughs> I have tried incorporating more glute days but I don't want to overdo it, which leads me to my second question. How often do you work legs? Thank you in advance and sorry for the long questions you rock. So thank you so much. <laughs> so I feel like this is always a really difficult thing to balance is trying to stay lean but also trying to keep your muscles. So it's not just the muscles in your glutes. Typically you want to keep as much muscle mass on as possible. So when you're dieting, trying to lose as much fat fat as possible in the least amount of muscle. That is always the goal, typically always the goal during prep. For me, um, I do have smaller glutes compared to other muscles on my body, so I am very similar to you. Unfortunately, some of this is just gen genetics, and some people hold more fat in their glutes, some people have hold more fat in their stomach. It just is very individual, and typically sometimes, I, I think that if you overdo cardio, sometimes, in, in my opinion, I've seen some people who just look very very flat on stage so I would say that relying on diet would be very very helpful instead of focusing solely on a lot of cardio I do about three leg days a week um, two are very strength based and then one of them is a little bit more like light and just kind of more activation so that is something that I do currently with my coach and that's also what we did uh, during prep this is from Erica um, Sunning, and I'd love to know what peak week typically looks like training and diet. So this will vary, again, per individual. For me, typically, I always need to come in a little bit leaner. My goal for 2019 is to come in ready before show day, so I'm not having to do a lot of depletion days. I would actually like to reverse into a show, hopefully a little bit harder, but in the past, um, I do about four depletion days in a row, so they're typically very low carb. They are higher fat and higher in protein and then the next few days depending on how my physique is looking um, Andrew will increase my carbs the amount will vary I've had anywhere from you know 90 to 200 grams of carbs the day before a show the night before a couple days before it just varies and depends on uh, what I'm looking like I typically do like to keep my foods a little bit more clean just it's a preference for mine typically uh, my food is is pretty low leading up to a show so my foods are kind of already clean but I just like to cut out anything that's artificial like soft drinks uh, like I cut out um, energy drinks any uh, diet sodas things like that I just no sweeteners just you know I will drink black coffee <laughs> but, you know I just know that it's only you know for a week or two before the show and um, you know it's not too bad especially because the, the sh you know ends in sight what do you do when you have our anxiety about food what are your strategies not to ruin the diet so I feel like this is a little bit difficult because when you're in prep your diet it has to be a hundred percent there's no cheating uh, there's no going over your macros it's it's just you, you can't that, that's just my opinion if you were feeling extremely hungry extremely you know lethargic or tired or you're having these crazy food cravings I highly recommend that you reach out to your coach and, and talk to them and see what you can do but if you have certain food anxiety maybe um, when it comes to like cereal or rice cakes or something peanut butter I know that some people have some weird um, prep cravings like I, I get I get it I've been there maybe not to have it in your house or maybe have someone I don't know like be in charge of it they keep it locked up uh, something I don't know something like that or maybe you just know that you can't have certain foods in your house during prep so that's how I would combat food anxiety or maybe if you were craving like ice cream you make a lower cal version you make like a macro friendly version um, same thing if you're craving pizza maybe you make like a, a flatbread or you come up with some creative ways to still kind of get your food fix in so I hope I help answer your question a little bit let me know in down below in the comments if you still need help with that do you ever struggle with binging during or after prep yes I have um, I don't think that would have been anything that would have been diagnosable by a professional. You know, I, I am a licensed counselor and so I am very familiar with the DSM and I don't think that I had any symptoms that would have officially diagnosed me with binge eating or anything like that. But I would say I probably had uh, disordered eating, disordered eating habits. And I would say that it is um, probably pretty common, unfortunately, with competitors, uh, both male and female. You go through a long period of restricting, so it's very hard to kind kind of eat normally again. My first show prep and coming out of the show was very, very difficult. Um, 
I didn't really know how to eat normally um, and I was in a situation with food that it was really, really good and I hadn't had in a long time. I would overeat, feel really guilty. Um, I'm in a much better place now. Um, I don't have any sort of tendencies like that. I can't say that I have handled all of my reverse diets 100% perfectly, but I am getting better every single time. So if you are having any sort of binging, purging, any disordered eating, I highly recommend you reaching out first to your, um, to your coach, also to a professional because oftentimes a lot of coaches aren't able to handle any sort of eating disorders or even eat disordered eating habits. So I would recommend that you reach out to a professional. Um, last question, I think. Yes. How long does it realistically take to prep? I'm 5'5", 135. I know height, weight aren't everything, but it may give you a general idea. Also, how the heck do you get started as a first timer? This is from Ashley Marshall. So, um, you were correct that height and weight doesn't necessarily play a factor into your prep because it all depends on the muscle mass you have, how lean you are, and what division you're competing in. I would say for first timer, for first timers to give yourself a little bit more time. Typically what I've seen is like a 12 week prep seems to be kind of like the, the go-to, but that really varies for everyone. I've had preps that have only been like three or four months and then I've also had preps where I was in prep for eight months. It really just varies um, a lot on uh, your, your body type. Getting started, um, I have a very, very, very old series at the beginning of my YouTube uh, career, I guess you could say, or uh, I don't really know. But the very big, my first few like coaching series, uh, when I talk about coaches and picking coaches, um, the quality of the videos are awful. Let's see, But the content is still really good. So trying to find a coach who's knowledgeable, um, you know, trying to figure out what division would be best for you. So all of those things uh, and really doing your research. So I highly recommend getting on Instagram and, and YouTube and kind of maybe see what it's like, what it's about. Um, and of course, everyone doesn't show everything, so you don't really have like the full idea until you actually do it yourself. But um, what I would also recommend is going to a show um, and seeing you know, what physiques really stand out to you the most and also if you feel like it's something that you'd want to do. If you have any more questions, you know, and actually just everyone in general, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment them below and I will get back to you. And I'm so sorry that this took so long, but I recorded it and I just really didn't really didn't like it but anyway uh thanks so much for watching you guys um make sure you are subscribed to my channel give this video a thumbs up and um i'll see you guys in the next one bye